John had been in prison for six months when the guards came down for him that final time. And when his head was presented at the banquet hall, after all the guests had seen it and offered their remarks, how empty, how dumb, a mug the Sultan of Palmyra snickered. The Tetrarch's wife, Herodias, instructed that the servants be sure to bury it separate from the body, the fear being that if the head and the body were buried together, there stood the chance that they might couple again, might recombine and seek some kind of revenge. We wouldn't want that, her eye slid beneath its coal black stripe, over in the general direction of her husband Antipas, who was already pale and trembling. John's disciples came for the remains the following day. They took what they were given, the body alone, and carted it off, some say all the way to Damascus. As for the head, Herodias directed only that it be buried in an unclean place, and there at Machaerus. The whiff of the prophet's death she did not mind, apparently only the prospect of his return intact. There was one member of Herod's court, a follower of Jesus named Joanna, who was so distraught at the thought of the holy man's head being discarded that way, she went to the place the servants had buried it. A makeshift pen where boar were being kept for a hunt the following day. With her own bare hands, she dug it up from the muck and the urine and the excrement. She set it in an earthen crater meant for wine, and secreted it away along the northern road, the King's Road, that snaked its way along the eastern coast of the Bitter Sea to where it met the Jordan. At dawn, just beyond the northern tip of the coastline, she washed it in a little stream that fed the river from the east, the Wadi Abara. Witnessed only by a bank of thirsty willow trees and the swallows that made nests there, she gathered up her dress between her legs and waded out to the middle. It took two hands to push the vessel down, the waters turning circles around her, sliding over the rim and in. She did not presume to touch the head, just let the water gush in and surround it, and seep inside the hair and cavities, and lift out all the matted filth and worms and parasites that had packed down on it. Slowly the face appeared, the skin a milky blue beneath the undulating surface, the hair billowing like black silk, the eyes wide set and deep, resting beneath smooth lids, the brow without furrow, the mouth broad and relaxed, the tongue which once had loosed such fire upon the throngs of Israel, now at peace. But was this the face of John, Joanna wondered, or of death? She had no way of knowing. She had never seen the man in life.